and welcome to Digital Banking Work in Progress, an interview series where we discuss the various complications of transforming banks to digital. This is where I get to chat with some unique personalities in banking and hear their daring opinions on what it takes to go digital. And joining me today is Mohamed Gamel, someone who has unique perspectives of banking technology because he has played for both teams banking and technology. Um, Mohammed has held various roles within banks, uh, largely in technology, uh, but also ending up as chief operating officer of Al Ryan Bank in the UK. <clears throat> he also has extensive experience working in banking technology companies and is presently the founder and CEO of Dot Connect, a technology company that focuses on digital customer engagement uh, in the financial services. Good morning, Mohammed. It's a pleasure to Mohammed. have you on my show. Our pleasure is mine, Sashika. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for the introduction. It was very, very nice and sweet from you. Thank you. So I'm curious to know which team you preferred betting for, banking or technology? Ah, boy, <laughs> that's, that's a very good question. Um, uh, you know what? As you mentioned, I spent more than 25 years in my life on both sectors. So, um, and we went from the hype, is technology is enabler uh, mm. for, or technology is a driver. Mm. And I saw it as technology is enabler. And halfway through, I felt technology is a driver. But now on my 52 years old and 27 years of experience, it is both. It is enabler and driver. It is both of them. And that's how I realized. So. To answer your question, I like both. I like the, um, um, technology and banking together. Good, good. It's a it's it's a good and safe answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's the truth, but it's it's safe nevertheless. <laughs> um, so, uh, Mohammed, we were chatting the other day, you and I, uh, about the use of AI in banking, uh, and and I remember you chuckled when I said that uh, AI is probably the most abused word of 2023, um, I think I think we can blame generative AI for it because uh, even though AI has been around uh, for decades, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, tools like ChatGPT that actually made it publicly accessible overnight uh, and as a result, almost sensationalized what AI could do for businesses. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, and before we go into the nitty gritties and the nuances of AI in banking, uh, can we get a start with getting some clarity into what we mean by artificial intelligence uh, and, and what classes of AI there are and, and what's applicable in the context of banking? Um, I think you're absolutely right on the uh, on the on the hype that happened after the chat GPT and people sometimes they forget that AI, started with Alan Turing back in in the Second World War. And I'm sure you might have seen the Imitation Games, great movie. So yeah. from that time, AI started to happen. And AI is a very large definition. Um, natural language processing is an AI. Uh, uh, cognitive services in general, voice recognition is a sort of an AI. Mm -hmm. But people always think of AI as the machine learning, as the mm -hmm. deep machine learning as something more sophisticated, something will do more things, the deep fake, all of that is an AI. I think when ChatGPT stormed the world back in November last year and people start having, having used to it, oh. um, me as a technology person, I was scared when I start dealing with the chat GPT, although that was 3.5, not even chat GPT-4, yeah. but I was scared. But what scares me more is, um, probably scares is not the right word, what make it more exciting when straight after that in January, Microsoft injected 10 billion on, on OpenAI and took the commitment. It will integrate GPT-4, not just with Bing, but the co-pilot in their products. And we are now in November and co-pilot is around the corner from all of us in Visual Studio, in coding, in Microsoft Word, Excel, all Microsoft Office is now using the co-pilot. And, um, um, I wouldn't, if you asked me in November last year, would you substitute some of your developers with a co-pilot Visual Studio? I would have said, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not, no way. But now 
a um, few weeks ago, we started, uh, it's not a secret, we started an R&D on the quality of code being generated from the Copilot and Visual Studio. And with that, going to save some individuals, some developers uh, 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 from our side, or make them at least focus on some more complicated stuff, not the easy classes, not the easy yeah. stuff. This Copilot is doing that. So things have changed within the landscape of one year. Is it the same speed and the same pace that happened in banking or, or financial services? Mm. Absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. By definition, financial services, because they serve clients, they deal with the client money, the most precious thing to people, they are by definition not as eager to change, not as easy to change. I always feel that they are like a big elephant. You cannot move that elephant very easy. You, they have, it's a lot of things to have to do. Um, in the last few years, the regulators, I'm talking about the UK per se, they became very, very rigid on uh, scrutinizing projects and scrutinizing what's happening. And if things will go wrong, they will impose big fines on you. Um, to the extent what happened, and it's not secret, it's a public domain, what happened with one of the banks when, the, when they impose a fine on the bank, they also impose a fine on the CTO of the bank mm. on his personal liability because the senior management regime in the UK will allow them to do that. And the guy was charged for £85,000. Oh, that's a scary thing. So now I am in the seat of the C-suite of a bank looking mm. after technology. I have to be either do nothing because if you do nothing, you will get you no get fund. <laughs> exactly. Or I have to not go with the startups, with the yes. early adoption. I have to wait until number 10 or 15 or 20 in line mm. after or those 20 people have or banks have deployed it. Then I to can feel safe enough. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And this is a challenge for a startup like us to find the client that he um, uh, that they will be able to consider a startup um, innovation on ideas, etc., and say, you know what, I'll give you a shot to go and try this with me, and let's see how it goes, how it takes us. Um, it's not easy, still there, but it's not easy. So what kinds of applications of AI do you commonly see that banks are today able to offer, uh, you know, within their products and services? Two main ones. I think uh, uh, one of them regarding voice recognitions, to use the voice recognition uh, uh, as your password, for example, which has mm -hmm. HSBC in the UK implemented um, a couple of years back. Um, and the very common one is the chatbot, which is mm -hmm. quite often, as you know, it's a very dumb, it's very, I, I know people, once they see the chatbot, they go and ask, can you please speak to agent? Can I speak to agent? Because... <laughs> And, and the problem after the chat GPT came along, this is where the bar gets high. I think we reached now 100 million consumers on the chat GPT. I was reading the other day. So the, the bar now is so high when you chat mm. with a machine that it yes. will give a meaningful conversation. But yes. the current chat bot, although it is AI driven, but doesn't give you that, mm. that okay. uh, doesn't give you that. Um, I have seen a lot of talk and actually, we have involved in some of that talk regarding analyzing the data of the bank and start using the um, deep machine learning of the um, generative tools uh, like OpenAI mm. to generate over a history of four or five years of call center, for example, uh, mm. cases to start generating more meaningful a chat GPT type on mm. that one. But if you go to ask the banks to do this with you, they will be very, very concerned, quite rightly, because of data privacy. Yes. They are the data controller, and you as a customer data subject have trusted them. So they'll be very, 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 very concerned. Even when you say we're going to anonymize the data, no one will know who is the underlying client. It's mm. very hard. So I think the big part of the AI, which I think can make a lot of benefits of predicting customer behavior, of giving the customer the suitable products that the customer is looking for based on the customer behavior before mm. and the customer financial information, et cetera, it is far from being implemented because mm. banks are precious about their data, quite frankly, concerned about the data integrity. And sometimes they say, oh, we need to fix some of the data side from our side to make it ready for you to take it. Yeah. And this is where the, the gap and the challenge will come from. Yeah. And I think personally, um, part of that challenge can be addressed with, um, you know, concepts like consent management, where you specifically ask customers for their consent. 
uh, to use data. But essentially, the trick there is, uh, as with anything, is that customers will only give you consent if they can see a, a, a significant or a material improvement to their existing experience or their existing products and services. So I think that's that's one of the uh, you know that, journeys that, that banks that, need to take. One. Yes, that's I, I agree with you. And and to be honest, you know, most of the T's and C's that most of the people they just say accept or agree and they continue from that yeah. includes some of the uh, um, um, the right to the, yes. to the data controller to anonymize the customer data and use it for the benefit of the customer. Yeah. Uh, so, but that still still doesn't give the bank the or the confidence enough that my data when it goes to um, a generative tool in the clouds and it mm. let, lasts there for a few days or weeks until the training happened and then I bring it back. Uh, uh, mm. It is safe and secure. And I'm, I'm going to answer one of the clients through the, 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 the generative tool. It will not mention another client name because it was part of the content yes. and stuff like that. All, yeah. And it's about concerns. I, I wouldn't blame them. That's a valid, valid concern. So that's why I think a partnership between the, 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 the vendor and mm. the client, I mean the bank here, is mm. needed more than a sale. I'm not going to sell you something. Don't worry about the the payment initially or anything like that. Let's work together and let's do this. Let's let's make a model on the ground, which requires some sacrifice from vendors like ourselves and the others. Is uh, uh, our very first few projects on the ground? Mm. It is not about making money. It's not about even covering our costs. Potentially, it might be a lost lead. Mm. So we. Can a difference in the market. And I think this is the approach that we as vendors, when we find the right partner uh, from, from our clients in the banks, which I'm sure they are there, uh, we can work together to do this. Hmm. Once we have two or three cases on the ground, hmm. we can prove AI using machine learning, using deep learning to predict the customer behavior, to benefit the customer can work. Hmm. So, um, Mohammed, it's it's interesting that you should, you should talk about the, that that match almost like that match made in heaven where you find uh, almost like a perfect uh, customer uh, uh, as in in the context of a bank uh, a perfect bank to work with uh, on an AI project where you know they're open to um, trying various things out but are also um, confident enough around the security and the the, the privacy concerns etc now, what does that really say about, you know, all these banks uh, claiming that, oh, we just added AI into our products and services. Uh, and, and some of us go, really? Like, is that how it works? Um, because I feel that a lot of a lot of the claims that come from the financial services sector that AI has been incorporated uh, doesn't really uh, result in anything any significant improvements around the customer experience or even any enhancements around the the employee productivity or creativity so how is how, you know where is this going wrong and and why do you why do we still need to find that you know perfect bank to start this with so that we can make a case of it for the rest of them in 2023 when even the consumers are taking up uh, you know using ai for you know, for their, you know, purposes. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a very good point, but I think talking from a vendor perspective, I think we are as guilty as the others. So in terms of, we also quite often claim that we have an AI product because AI now is a very attractive word. It's a buzzword. Yes. So we do that. And the same thing, financial services, some of the financial services, they say that we have an AI because they have an element of AI. Mm. Your point of has has that element significantly made a value to the end consumer yes. that actually showed that one you're absolutely right no but but it does show we have have an element of ai tell you a nice nice thing is um, you know the the, the bulb the, the the light bulb um yeah. that connect to alexa so yeah. they say we are an iot which is clearly yes, yes. and we are ai enabled because it connects to an ai device so, but they claim that they are an AI enabled, which is correct. I couldn't say it's wrong, but mm -hmm. does it have any AI part of it? No, 
but it connects to AI device. And I think this is where things going wrong is you need to have the title, the badge, without yes. the meaning it's under that badge. Exactly. Without what is what, as you said, what is the benefit to the end consumer? How much value you made to your customers? How much savings you made to your, your call center? How much improvements you made to your processes? And this is where I said the partnership is needed between those brave clients, those brave vendors that they can sit together, really trying to make a difference, not trying to sell and not scared from implementing new ideas to make a difference. Um, but as, as, as you know, quite often financial services, because they have so many regulatory requirements, so many restrictions, etc., they are bucked into regulatory requirements here. And we need to do some data cleansing there. We need to do this. And they are so tight with, with some projects. So at, at one point, which I'm glad now that, that you get some people like that, you need those visionaries from that side to say, if we kept firefighting, it's not going to improve. Yes. With, with the rise of new banks, the can I mention the names? The ones with the Starling, the Revolut, I'm talking about the UK. Those names are, are the new banks uh, 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 that came in the UK five, six, seven years ago. They have taken so much client base, so much mm-hmm. noise. My daughter and my son, they are not using Lloyds and HSBC, etc. They use those new ones because it is all in app. There is no branches. That's how they get used to it. Yeah. Those, those, I think, they are more likely to be using today and mm. also be using more and more of the AI side of things. Right. And it gives me an idea that in order to, you, you know, you mentioned the brave banks and the brave vendors, right? And I think there are more brave vendors than there are brave banks, right? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Okay. Yeah, but I, no, I, I agree with you because the nature is different. The, the, the startups, the fintechs, by definition, they have this enthusiasm of doing yes. that, but yes. they don't yes. carry that huge responsibility of customer data and consumer data. Yes. They don't have That's that true. huge uh, things true. to their shoulder. So I think there is a reason why they are braver, but um, yeah. So I think this is just a just a thought that came into me right now while you were explaining this. I think in order for us to expand uh, the number of brave banks and the number of banks that will actually go into AI uh, mm-hmm. in the hope of uh, improving the customer experience or improving their own productivity rather than as a marketing gimmick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's an onus on two, two sectors. One is on the regulators. Uh, if you look at open banking, for example, it was regulators who came in and made it sort of pushed the banking industry to, mm-hmm. you know, um, sort of... Um, take on apis and 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 really you know mandated that yeah, yeah. they provide the that capability to share data right mm-hmm. so similarly i think there is an onus on regulators to come in and provide some guidance to the banks in saying even these are some things that are okay for you to go ahead and do so that that gives them that push to feel that okay we are not going to be held liable and responsible of course they will be held liable but that you know it's it's okay to even even considering projects like that that is one aspect mm-hmm. i think the other aspect is already happening which is the the push from the consumers because uh, you know i i came across this um, this uh, chap called i think his name was joshua brown Bronowen or something like that he's a ceo of a tech tech company. The The name of the tech company is Do Not Pay. Um, okay. And uh, he did a social experiment. Of course, he did a very risky thing. He uh, connected all his um, financial data via APIs uh, to generative AI. And uh, he asked uh, the AI tools to get him better deals. Uh, so in terms of subscriptions, in terms of, um, you know, uh, yeah, compare the charges, market, yeah, yeah. And, and better rates, etc. So that was quite brave, and 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 it and you know the social experiment was successful. Um, now I'm a mother of three. I'm far more risk averse than he is, uh, <laughs> but even I have trialed you know uh, various tools to see whether I can get get a better experience through my for my financial uh, services. Right. So consumers are taking up AI now, 
right? Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. I think in the future, it's going to be a battle between the consumer AI and uh, and the financial provider AI. But I feel that this is almost, I hope that this is pushing banks in the, in the right direction into considering and understanding what really they need to bring on board in order to be relevant, in order to keep up, and most importantly, to use AI to actually, you know, provide better financial services in a, in a better way for customers. Uh, I think you are absolutely right. You, you touched two two points. I'm going to quickly rise on them. So the, the, the regulator uh, to say something. I agree with you, but we've seen before the regulator never prescribed something. The regulator mm. always just have a very loose framework mm. to, make, to make it say, you do this. And we've seen with the PSD2 and the open banking, they have never described the way that you have to do it. They just said general framework on how you can do it, even when it comes to the, when, when the European uh, banking authority was implementing open banking. Yes. And they have never even dictated how that should operate from a technical point of view to standardize the APIs. Mm-hmm connected to each competent authority to do it. Secondly, uh, regarding what you're saying for the, um, it came just to my mind now, because the open banking allows the fintechs to get mm. access to consumer data with their consent. Yes. And we've just said that the fintechs are more braver but mm. because of the nature of, of who they are mm. to Raise AI in a in a larger scale, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So in reality, the threat now is I am a fintech. I can get access to customer data. Mr. Bank, you have few million customers. If they give me the consent, they have access, and I'm going to give them these analytic analytics tools to analyze their financial information. And some of them they already do this today. Uh, do they have enough traction? Probably not today. But mm-hmm. but as they improve more, definitely get more more traction. Mm. Um, banks have done, there is analysis have been made um, last year, so a year before. Mm. Do do a consumer, I'm talking about the UK, trust mm. their uh, Lloyd's financial, 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 financial services, existing legacy financial services mm. versus the new banks mm. and versus the new fintechs. Mm. And a shocking percentage was more than 70% or 75% of the consumer still trust their legacy banks. Legacy, yes. And this is this is a double sword. Either we'll make them complacent mm. and say, you know what, they trust us, let's do what <laughs> we are doing, or they take it as a strong message that we still have something in the game, we still have a big stake on the, on the game, that we can keep this percentage, and if not increasing it, at least mm. don't get it to degrade. Mm. Um, that's... that's um, that's a very important point. So there is there is definitely uh, a lot of work from from both sides, from the vendor side, from the bank side, uh, um, um, to find the model that they can provide a meaningful, valuable information to the clients. So talking about legacy and and incumbent banks uh, in this context, um, you know, we're talking about all these, all these, you know, these, you know, brave initiatives that we we should get on, and the the the, the various things that we can do with it. But still, a lot of um, I, I would say a significant portion of the banks still have legacy systems in their technology infrastructure. Mm. So, how does what is your opinion on how AI can even coexist? Uh, within an environment like that, which has uh, technology stacks full of legacy? It's a very good question. I think one of the wrong rights, if that makes sense, is when those banks, they look at what what is called digital transformation and Mm. they think, should I start front to back or back to front? Mm. So should I go and... Uh, rip and replace mm. all my legacy core banking and systems, etc., and then put something beneficial to the clients, which is looks like the building blocks and the very yeah. methodical approach, and this yeah. is the right approach. But you and I, that that will take a minimum 24, 36 months program, 
quite often, I think between 65 to 70% of these programs, they go fail because yeah. of a number of reasons and the banks will spend millions. Yeah. Or should go front to back, which mm. is trying to get quicker benefits to my clients, mm. but I still connect it to legacy application, which is I should replace at one point in my life. Mm. And when I say replace them, I need to redo the integration with the front side of things. And no winner in this battle. I'm, I'm not saying, of course, if you ask me, probably I'm more lean into the front to back, mm. but uh, because I work on customer engagement, yes. digital engagement, but leave this bias aside. I think it's the same thing with the AI. The beauty of the machine learning, the beauty of the deep learning, the beauty of the big data. Give me the data and I will give you yeah. what is from this data. So don't wait. And that's why I'm saying this is the wrong right don't wait for the right approach, which will take three, four years to correct your data, fix your core systems, replace them with all the singing and dancing systems, which will take you five years. And then by that time, probably you'll have no more clients because people have jumped and left. Start now with whatever you have, what you have, the technology, the big data handling, the machine learning, the deep learning can handle any of these data in whatever format, Start from that point. Mm. Don't try to to fix the wrong things, but do it as you go along. You know that that example of leave the car running and change the wheel while it is moving. Mm. Don't try to stop it and to change yeah. everything and make it um, um, yeah. a big one, which is uh, uh, you'll stop your business. Yeah, I think that's so really. In my view, in my in my view, I disagree with all these big transformation programs yeah. that it takes take few years before getting the benefit to the end consumer and to the bank. Sorry. I think that's a really great message uh, to banks who are probably not brave enough to take that first step. Uh, that... I, I don't like to be seen like blaming them because some of them are my clients, but it's not no, blaming absolutely. them. Absolutely, I do understand and appreciate where they are coming from. We're just trying to encourage them. That we can work together to do something different. Sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I think I I, I kind of uh, focus more on on that. I, I like that word brave. So I think I focus more. On, they're <laughs> like my customers too. too. <laughs> they're my customers yeah. too. And and you know, coming from an integration background, you know, there's a lot of support that we can provide to to kind of connect everything together. Uh, but I think it's a great message that you know you can start on. Um, effective and useful AI applications, even with what you have today. Um, so, I mean, you and I can go on, I think, Mohammed, uh, yes, on, on, on this topic and many other topics. Uh, we can go but... offline after that, no worries. We can we can go yes. offline after that yes. interview. Yes, <laughs> uh, but uh, time is not on our side on this particular one. Um, so before we close up, I want to have a fun exercise with you, uh, a quick, oh. quick fire round. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to say a word and then you're going to say the word that comes into your head when you listen to my word. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's uh, going to be very easy stuff. Don't forget that English is not my first language. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very easy stuff. It's going to be stuff that you've already spoken at great lengths, uh, okay. even on this interview. Uh, but the trick is to kind of, you know, bring it down to one word. That's the challenge. Okay. All right. Okay, here comes the first one. Uh, this is on your turf. Uh, digital customer experience. Sorry, digital customer engagement. Um, um, my life. <laughs> Good, great. Um, open banking. Still in the early steps and there are huge potential for it. Okay. Chatbots. Uh, if it is not in the same level of a chat GPT, it is useless. Okay, great. Um, and the last one is socks. Socks like like socks. Yeah, socks. <laughs> okay, I am. Um, <laughs> that's a very very important question because. <laughs> I am not a fan of socks. My wife is. So um, um, probably, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good insight to close off with. <laughs> okay. I'm not a good fan of it. So thanks once again and see you in a future episode.